Wake up, people! <laughs> Rick, why are you laughing about a woman beheaded? Well, I mean, we're going to look at this news article, and then we're going to look at a new updated article. And I did a video on this a while ago, and I mentioned it in one of my lives. I don't know what or where it's at. If somebody remembers and they want to put a, a link in a comment, that'd be great. Uh, then I'll link it in the description. But uh, I remember saying this woman got beheaded and she had a restraining order. And a piece of paper doesn't keep you safe, even though government tells you it will. They want to take your gun. Had this woman had a gun, she could have defended herself. But I think, I'm not sure, I think I said, who thinks this woman that had her head cut off didn't do anything wrong, had two kids, and was just a good mom? And I said, well, you're probably an idiot. If I didn't say it, I thought it. And I was trying to be nice by not saying it. So let's discuss this beheading here and look at the failures of law enforcement and mothers and the father. Why did it happen? Residents living near Laurel Street and Magnolia Avenue in San Carlos trying to understand what could have led to Thursday's gruesome killing of a neighbor. A woman in her 20s with two young kids murdered in the middle of the street by a man she knew with witnesses close by. By a man she knew. Uh, she actually had a kid with him. She actually had a restraining order with him. And she was seeing him after she got a restraining order. But it gets better. Hang on. This is a 25-year-old female. The San Mateo County Sheriff's Office only describing the weapon used as a stabbing instrument, one that had not been found as of Thursday evening. Neighbor Chappelle Thorborn describes the disturbing scene he encountered around noon Thursday, only steps from his front door. And the head was underneath the car and she was laying in the back of the car. So the head was under the car and she was laying behind the car. He later describes that he walks by with a couple friends before they arrest him. I don't know if he came back from the scene or if he left the scene or when that happened. Uh, they still haven't found the sword or the knife that cut her head off. Just severed and then they covered her up. The sheriff's office says the woman and the suspect were in an ongoing relationship. However, so ongoing relationship. She had a restraining order and a child. Sources tell our I teams Dan Noyes the victim had a restraining order against the suspect since April. Officials aren't releasing details about the suspect's relationship to the woman's children, but our I team reports Child Protective Services Thursday took custody of seven and one year old girls who were inside the woman's home. Seven and one year old, one kid was hit, one was from another find outstanding citizen. Home. Neighbor Thorborn says he's familiar with the couple, having briefly interacted with them a number of times. He says the last time he saw the man was just before the suspect was taken into custody. He was hurt, shocked, disappointed. He was hurt, shocked, disappointed. He just cut his girlfriend's, the mother of his child's head off and he was hurt. Wow, we should really feel sorry for him. I mean, that's got to be pretty traumatic, having to cut off your girlfriend's head. Poor guy. Are you kidding me? You can tell when he walked by. I'm like, yeah, they cut somebody's head off. She's laying right there. Residents say their concern now is for the kids, with many questions about how someone could commit such a heinous crime. After he cut her head off. Such a heinous crime. Now we're concerned about the kids. He came walking up, him and his two friends, and they walked right by me, and, and they arrested him. We asked about any history of abuse, history of domestic violence. The sheriff's office only confirming the suspect was known to law enforcement. In San Carlos, I'm... Okay, known to law enforcement means they've arrested him, they've had contact with him, they've had several interactions, he's been in and out of jail. That's just code. Now let's get to the rest of the story. Now you're going to find out why I was laughing. Here we go went through and helped bring her children home. They were taken by social workers after this attack. How you holding up? Danielle Gannon. <laughs> so this is the mother of the beheaded, the grandmother of the children. Another fine voting member of the community. Jeez. Met me outside her home in Vallejo today. I'm vaccinated. Vallejo, V-Town. First thing she says, the officer, I'm vaccinated and boosted and everything, so you're safe. Where's this woman been living? In a freaking box? 
Everyone I know who has the vaccine and boosted has caught COVID several times. Are you kidding me? And boosted and everything, so you're safe. You're safe. Let me hug you with my COVID carrying, fully vaccinated hug. Really? I don't know how to do this. Rick, why are you so... Whatever. Hang on. I'm so sorry. She invited me to meet her son, Marty Castro, the father of the victim in yesterday's brutal sword attack. Okay, so she's the grandmother. Now we're going to meet the find outstanding dad. Back, Karina Castro. She was an amazing girl. She was an amazing... Amazing girl. Man, you would think that he would, like, all in her life and knew all about her and knew she had a restraining order and knew this guy was beat. How did he not know any of this? Hmm woman very stubborn determined to raise her daughters on her own very stubborn determined oh geez another entitled i am power hear me war woman now she got no head and it wasn't her fault maybe let's see how this develops karina was 27 years old attended menlo atherton high school got her ged and worked as a doordash driver she left behind oh she got money for tattoos she got money to have kids Got money to have kids with different guys. Got money to get a restraining order. Hang on. Let's see what she did. I'm sure she didn't do anything. I'm sorry. I'm being rude. Nice woman trying to raise her kids. Great single mom. Behind seven-year-old and one-year-old girls. She had the youngest with a man now. Oh, she got tattoos on, on both sides. Nice. I got to say something nice about tattoos so my tattoo people won't come here crying. Oh, look at that fine art on that tattoo. Very nice help for her murder 33 year old jose rafael solano landetta man hispanic i don't know if women i usually ran men but hispanic men when you run them they usually have four or five sometimes six different names and then they go shortcuts look listen to what this guy went by the family says he goes by the name rafa solano and Rafael, she had the youngest with a man now held for name. her murder, 33-year-old Jose Rafael Solano Landetta. The family says he goes by the name Rafa Solano. So what? What? when you have multiple names, when cops stop you, you give one name and another last name, then you give another first name and another last name, and you get to switch around all those names, and then when you go to court, it's like, I wasn't alive, and that was part of my name. And then, so it's very hard to connect it. Once they use a name, we'll kind of put an AKA on their system. So if they use it, it'll tag back to them. But not not always. It's just a pain. But, you know, with, with 3 million more coming across the border, eh, I'm sure it'll get easier to track people. And that he didn't work. I found some rap songs he posted on. So he didn't work. She picked a fine, outstanding, unemployed rap singer. Oh, Rick. She wanted to have a baby. She loved him. Okay, hang on. You too. correct or the possible meds. He is a diagnosed schizophrenic on meds, and he would use that as an excuse for his behavior. He drank excessively, and you're not supposed to do that on those kind of medications. The family drinking excessively on medications, self-medicating. He's a schizophrenic. She had a restraining order, but yet she was still hanging out with him. Confirms what I learned from law enforcement sources yesterday. The Solano had been violent with Karina and she got a restraining order against him in April, but continued to interact with him. And if there's somebody out there abusing your daughter, don't, take don't no. let it go. Don't let it go? Why did you let it go? She had a restraining order. Where were you? Notice the cute little dog sitting next to him. That'll become relevant here in a minute. Don't take no for an answer. <laughs> you will I, feel... I, responsible no matter what anyone says i know i do too baby in the he feels responsible remember that day before the murder snapchat messages between the couple got very contentious oh she got a nice tattoo on her neck too man she got a lot of tattoos she's really freaking like miss tattoo tattoos are so cool they're so wonderful i obtained more than a dozen most with language too explicit to show here so they're texting after a restraining order when they're supposed to have no contact. See, when a woman goes and says, I'm scared of a man, please help me, government, and they go, okay, we'll give you a restraining order. Then if he comes by you, we can arrest him. And then they text and they call and they invite him over and then they come over and get in a fight and then they call the cops, go, he's got a restraining order, arrest him. That's how that shit works for those that don't know the system. She threatens to tell the world about his rape conviction. Oh, threatens to tell the world. Ooh. 
Ooh, that won't upset him. I mean, that if I'm really scared of a guy and I went and got a restraining order, I think I'll call and tell him I'm going to tell the world. That's how scared I am of him. Really? Really? People wonder why she ain't got a head now? Involving a minor. Not that I'm encouraging violence. Not that I'm saying she should have got her head cut off. I'm just telling you, when you hear these media stories, it's very easy to get sucked in to, oh, she's a good single mom, she's perfect, she's wonderful, and this mean man just cut her head off for no reason. There's usually a reason. Obviously, you shouldn't be cutting people's heads off, but it gets better. Rafa calls her snitch lip and... <laughs> snitch lip. <laughs> it's good, snitch lip. It's good. You just wait. It says, yeah, you just wait till you ain't got no head. We'll see how that shit plays out. I want to see the text messages. Warns her, F around and find out. Ooh, fuck around and find out. I think I have a shirt that says that. Out. Karina fires back. You want to put a target on my back? Your homie's going to know the real you. Uh-oh. Your homie's going to know? Shit, she's going to tell his homies he was arrested. That'll be a badge of honor. Why would he care about that? Hmm. And threatens to expose his sexual relationship with another man. She. Oh shit! Here we go. Not only am I gonna say you got a rape. Now I'm gonna say you take it up the poo poo shoot. Ah, oh, but she's scared, Rick. She needs government to protect her. We should give all the guns to government so they can protect us. I'll get a restraining order. And then when my head's gone, I wonder why. And then we'll have a bunch of liberals st stepping up there saying, we need more laws to protect these poor victim women that didn't do anything. Okay. He adds, dude, go ahead and try and take me out. Just hours later, they had a confrontation in the... <laughs> hours later, she's got no head. People are like, oh, she, she was a mother. Okay. Street outside her apartment, her daughter safely inside. He got... Oh, look. That's, that's what she looked like when she had a head. Oh. Really mad, went to the trunk of his car, pulled out whatever it was, and killed her right there behind her car. Stunned neighbors. For no reason. Just killed her. She was the model citizen. My daughter, who I loved, who I was in her life. This idiot. Hang on. Wait till this guy gets at the end. What he's doing. Saw it play out. Chappelle Forborn saw the gruesome aftermath. The head was underneath the car, and she was laying in the back of the car. Yeah, yeah, we were Just that. Through media reports, her father rushed to the scene and saw the fire department spraying down the blood on the street. When the deputy walked up, he would not confirm who it was, but I said, did she own that black Volkswagen? And he said, yeah, that's her car. That's my daughter. Social workers had already taken... Oh, she's got two kids and she's pregnant. Maybe she's not pregnant. I don't know if you can say that. Maybe she's a man. I don't even want to call her a she, but she looks like she's pregnant. Whatever. What do they call that? A fupa, fapa? Somebody was trying to give me some definition of the belly, whatever. And the girls, Danielle and Marty, want them as soon as possible. But CPS said they'd have to go through the... Oh, I kind of talked over that. So they want the kids as soon as possible. Ready? Yeah, that's her car. That's my daughter. Social workers had already taken the girls. Danielle and Marty want them as soon as possible. So when you lose your head, literally, CPS takes the kids. And they don't just give them, sometimes they do give them to somebody right there on the spot. They'll give them to a grandmother or somebody if there's no issues. If there's issues, because they have to run and make sure there hasn't been any of the issues, they say, no, we have to take them into protect custody and then we'll do a background. Then they may give you the kids in a couple days. But when they do the background, if they find out there's drugs and you can't be trusted and you've been in and out of joint and prison and etc., then... You don't get the kids because they know you just want the kids for the free check that you're going to get with them. So let's see what happens here. Oh, but CPS said they'd have to go through the application process. Now I want those girls. That's what I want first. Then I want Rafa to I want fry in jail. Oh, she's mad at him. All right. I don't I care what happens to him. As I left, Marty Castro was in tears, calling the coroner to get his daughter's effects, calling CPS to get his grandchildren back, and calling animal control so he can pick up her dog and two cats. So, he's a concerned father that knew that she was getting abused and crying that he feels responsible, and he's not even going to take her dog and cat. He's going to send his daughter's dog and cat to the freaking pound to be euthanized. 
This is the loving father we're talking about here with his little Nike shorts and his NFL jersey. Are you freaking kidding me? Grandchildren back and calling animal control so he can pick up her dog and two cats. Wow, that's a good father. Holy cow. The arraignment for Rafa Solana was scheduled for this afternoon, but has been pushed to Monday. Late today, the family texted me to say that CPS has informed them they will not release the girls to the father and grandmother for at least three to four weeks. So what that means, for those that don't know, is when CPS does a background, they find issues. They try to get a way to get around those issues. So if there is anger management, if there's drug rehab, if there is a pending case on the father or mother concerning drugs, alcohol or something or child abuse or prior child abuse, they will try in three weeks to try and get a court order to say, hey, they've taken care of this. They, they, we've scheduled them for anger management. We're, got, we're trying to find somebody who can give them supervised visits so the taxpayers can pay for somebody to supervise the visitation. And that, that's what that three or four weeks means for those that don't know. So anyway, I know you guys are going to think I'm like mean for laughing at this, but I, this is just typical of people getting involved in bad situations, making their future nothing but failure. And then everybody's going to play it out like, oh, we need to protect this one. And, and this is the poor guy. And he was abused. No, she was abused. No, he went to prison and prison didn't give him enough free food and steaks. And that's why he's that way. And, and we'll make all these excuses when you know what? I just say these people freaking deserve each other. Whatever. Not that I'm encouraging violence. Think somebody ought to get their head cut off. All right, let's get that clear. I don't want somebody crying. Man, you want a girl to get her head cut off. Whatever. All right, we'll end that there. Y'all have a good one.